Before proceeding, please make sure to subscribe to Intel Maniac and turn on the bell icon for upcoming videos. You can always support my work with your likes, comments and shares. And you can join me on Facebook and Instagram at Dental Maniac. For images and transcripts, please visit my Patreon page, the link for which is given here above. The term oral submucous fibrosis derives from oral meaning mouth, submucosal meaning below the mucosa of the mouth, and fibrosis meaning hardening and scarring, all shown here in this close-up view of the buccal mucosa. So by definition, Oral submucous fibrosis is the hardening or scarring of the submucous tissues of the oral cavity resulting from chronic inflammation of the oral tissues. The three main pathological characteristics of this fibrosis are excessive collagen deposition in the connective tissues below the oral mucosal epithelium, chronic local inflammation in the lamina propria or deep connective tissues, and degenerative changes in the muscles. The condition initially was discovered in five Indian women from Kenya and it was later named oral submucous fibrosis. The condition is well recognized due to its malignant potential as it contributes significantly to mortality. The chronic inflammation of submucosal tissues leading to the irritation of the oral mucosa and subsequent fibrosis has multifactorial causes which include betel quid chewing, frequent chili ingestion, genetics, immunologic processes, and nutritional deficiencies. Chewing betel quid, which is a common habit in Southeast Asia and India, is considered the primary cause of oral submucous fibrosis. The mixture of this quid or chew is a combination of the areca nut, betel leaf, tobacco, catechu, which is an extract of the acacia tree, and slaked lime or calcium hydroxide. The main component of the betel quid, which is the areca nut, contains aricolin. Aricolin disrupts collagen homeostasis by upregulating collagen synthesis and inhibiting collagen degradation. Aricolin also elevates cysteine C expression and increases soluble copper levels as well. Both of these facilitate fibroblastic proliferation. Additionally, slaked lime or calcium hydroxide in the betel quid hydrolyzes aricolin to aricadine. Aricadine facilitates fibroblastic proliferation and increases collagen formation. Looking at the inhibition of collagen degradation, flavonoids in areca nut inhibit collagen phagocytosis by stabilizing collagen fibers. Also, localized mucosal inflammation, which is induced by betel nut, recruits immune cells and increases cytokines and tumor growth factor beta, which in turn increases collagen production by activating procollagen genes. Tumor growth factor beta also impedes collagen degradation by activating the tissue inhibitor of the matrix metalloproteinase gene and the plasminogen activator inhibitor. Overall, components of the betel nut significantly contribute to collagen production and maintenance, resulting in oral submucous fibrosis. The histopathology of oral submucous fibrosis comprises various epithelial alterations, including alterations in retipeg shapes and subepithelial deposition of dense bands of collagen fibers. At different stages of the disease, Epithelial alterations can vary from atrophy with hypoplasia to hyperplasia or dysplasia. Looking at the epidemiology, the worldwide estimates of oral submucous fibrosis indicate that 2.5 million people are affected, with most cases concentrated on the Indian subcontinent, especially southern India. In India, it is widely prevalent in all age groups and across all socioeconomic strata. The condition is even prevalent among teenagers in India. The male to female ratio of oral submucous fibrosis varies by region. In India, oral submucous fibrosis occurs more often in women than men, but the opposite is true for other regions. Oral submucous fibrosis also occurs in other parts of Asia and the Pacific Islands. 
The migration of endemic beetle quid chewers has also made oral submucous fibrosis a public health issue in many parts of the world, including the United Kingdom, South Africa, and many Southeast Asian countries. Overall, throughout the globe, the patient's age ranges 20 to 40 years. Looking at the clinical presentation of the condition, Oral submucous fibrosis results in marked rigidity and an eventual inability to open the mouth. The buccal mucosa is the most commonly involved site, but any part of the oral cavity, even the pharynx, can be involved. Patients experience a severe burning sensation in the mouth after ingesting spicy foods. Other symptoms of oral submucous fibrosis include dry mouth, pain, taste disorders, restricted tongue mobility, trismus, dysphagia and altered tone. Because of the progressive inability to open one's mouth, it results in difficulty eating and consequent nutritional deficiencies, hence increasing the mortality rates. Patients with oral submucous fibrosis have an increased risk of developing oral cancer. The malignant potential and the origin of cancer are attributed to the generalized epithelial atrophy associated with oral submucous fibrosis and has a significant mortality rate of 7.6%. Ending this video with the treatment, oral submucous fibrosis is irreversible, with no effective treatment available. Improvement may occur if the habit is discontinued early, but cessation of the habit at a later stage might not help, as oral submucous fibrosis remains active, which suggests that components of the areca nut affect gene expression in the fibroblasts after initiation of the oral submucous fibrosis, hence producing greater amounts of normal collagen throughout life. Patient education on quitting beetle quit chewing is crucial as it worsens the condition. Avoiding tobacco in the quid reduces oral cancer risk. Patients should maintain oral hygiene, avoid spicy foods and eat a balanced diet to prevent malnutrition. Intervention studies and public health campaigns are key for community level control of the disease. I hope this video helps. If you think this video has really helped you, please hit the like button, share the video ahead. If you have got any questions or suggestions, you may write them down in the comment section below. Last but not the least, do hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell icon so that you get notifications each time a new video is uploaded. Thank you for watching.